This is Templin Radio. We'll be live in just a few minutes, but for now, I want to make sure that my mic is working and that you can hear me. So, that's why I'm saying things. Hello, folks, and welcome back to the Orion Arm. I am Mark, the man behind the curtain, and tonight we are continuing to design the Dawn of Victory star map. So, that's what we're doing. And I just realized that uh, chat's not working. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, can I fix it immediately? Maybe? Possibly? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Well, sorry about that, folks, but we got some more bad news for you. You might have uh, noticed it's been a, uh, a couple weeks since our last stream. And, uh, yeah, some bad news. So, as you know, we've been working with Tim Barton uh, to develop the background of the star map here. And I don't know what happened, but uh, right around the, uh, the end of uh, March, start of April, he gave us this update of the map. And the map, well, I mean, you'll see it, but he ruined it. He added these things to it, and I, I don't know how else to describe it. It was vile and filled with hate. Uh, in an episode of, of the Templin Institute... I, uh, I discussed something that's really traumatizing to me, and Tim put it in the map. Why? I have no idea. So, I'll show you what he did, and why we can't work with this guy anymore, but, uh, I just want to give you aware that what you're about to see is, is very awful, so, you know, just, just, prepare yourself. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, fuck. Yeah, he added hazard stripes to, to Soul. To the Indian arm, to the new cannon corridor, to the gold, like, oh my, oh god. So, yeah, uh, can't work with Tim anymore, under no circumstances, it's just, it's just, I mean, what, what do you, what do you say about this? I, <sighs> but, you know, th th that's fine, like, there was always a possibility this wasn't gonna work out, and I thought to myself, well, shit, like, 
we don't need a fancy background. I have uh, a Dawn of Victory map from 2006. Uh, so I think that's going to be, you know, just as good, right? So I want to present the uh, the brand new map that we'll be using instead of this. Uh, obviously a, a, a bit different. It's uh, not, not, I mean, there's room for improvement is what I'll say. Okay, so obviously all of that was a lie. Uh, things with Tim are as good as ever in case there's any doubt. But what actually happened is uh, right around the end of, uh, of March, uh, I was coughing so much that I pulled a muscle uh, in my chest next to my heart. <laughs> so for the past two weeks, uh, it's felt like someone's been like sitting on my chest and it's just been horrible uh, health-wise. So that's what's going on there. Sorry, and I'm also coughing a lot. So uh, instead of um, a, a regular kind of normal longer stream today, I thought what might be interesting uh, would be to, you know, just review some of the changes we've made to the map uh, so far, and then take you through uh, a history of all of the Dawn of Victory maps from the original mod uh, in 2006, all the way to the current modern uh, world building project. So that's what I thought would be fun for today, since I, I don't think I can handle the, the, full, the full thing today. So I hope you can forgive me. But first, uh, let's talk about what changed last stream. So what we were focusing on uh, was this area here. And I went into this with kind of like a rough idea of what the purpose of this part of the map was going to be. We have, you know, Italy here. We have Oto and the United States in particular over here. And I was thinking this is kind of our, our borderlands area where fascism and capitalism, democracy, whatever, are competing for influence. Um, and there'll be a bunch of these right throughout the map. So we have, I guess, no other ones actually over here. So yeah, this is our first kind of borderlands between the superpowers. Uh, yeah, and I've been messing around a whole lot with the placement of stars and the routes between them because, you know, we're not only making the map here, right? We're also developing the geopolitics, and that's when I started running into some headaches because I was trying to figure out, like, okay, which of these star lanes is, like, are the important ones? Like, where are the trade routes developing? So, I don't know. I kind of got stuck in a hole here where uh, I wasn't really sure what to do, and that's just, you know, a part of world building. So I got a couple ideas of some changes to this map I'm gonna do in the future. But for now, that's what's kinda of going on. Uh, apart from that, I think that was the big update from last year. And let me switch to the work uh, mode, by the way, because I keep forgetting to do that. All right, uh, but for the rest of the map is, is also really coming together. I don't know if I've talked about it, but we added some new sections into the, the deeps uh, right around here. We're calling them the Pillars of Hercules and just making sure that no matter how you get into the deeps, uh, there is a path through, which I think is kinda of cool. Uh, also on the docket, I think the uh, Dakawanga Deeps, or Dakawanga, Dewanga, I don't know how you pronounce it, but I think the Deeps need to be moved. Uh, in terms of the etymology of a lot of the star systems in this area, none of them are from... Is it Fiji? Uh, I, don't, I don't... I forget where the Dakawanga Shark God is from, but I know that none of these star systems are really related to that, so... The name Dakawanga is feeling out of place, so I think we're going to move it someplace to the frontier, and we'll rename this whole region uh, something else. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know if we got our map team in chat, but if they're able to add a bounty for that to our uh, to our document that I'll link right here, uh, that would be appreciated. But worst case, we're not going to be really delving, delving too deep into the deeps <laughs> until next stream. So, just, I don't know, come up with some ideas for what this place could be named, and we'll start looking through them. And... Same thing uh, for this Borderlands area, if you think, uh, <clears throat> if you got a name that you think fits this area. What I was thinking, and I don't know, I, I've kind of, I like this a lot, but I don't know if we're going too deep, uh, I keep saying deep, if we're going too far into like the Roman side of things, but I really liked the idea of calling this arm the uh, Elysium Fields. Just because that sounds so goddamn cool. I mean, everyone says, like, you gotta have a star system named, like, Elysium, right? Like, it's pretty much a guarantee whenever you're doing, like, a, a sci-fi setting. But why not an entire region? And that way, like, in the news, people will be like, Fighting continues in the Elysium fields today, which sounds rad as hell. So, I don't know. If you got an idea for a better name than Elysium fields, please let me know in the spreadsheet as well. But, okay, let's go back to the, the big picture and uh, travel back in time. So, uh, the year was 2006. It was around 10 p.m. at night. 
and uh, I was working on an old CRT monitor after working in a deli. This was, uh, I think, a thousand years ago now. In any case, uh, this is what the uh, the Dawn of Victory map looked like in the, the, the very first iteration, and I'm hoping that by showing you the progression of these maps, you can kind of figure out where I'm coming from and why things are looking the way they are. Uh, so the original idea was, I mean, it was so basic. Uh, Literally just the superpowers in a square. Every planet was placed extremely randomly, which is why they all look kind of evenly spaced apart. Like there's no clusters, there's no variation um, in the way these planets have been placed. And that's what I think makes this map looks kind of, I mean, I think there's a lot of things that make this map look like crap, but I, I think uh, the fact that it just looks so artificial, I don't know. I mean, who knows what a space map would actually look like, but this feels too even and too safe and I'll repeat this criticism for a lot of stuff. So, again, there was the question of how do you show politics on a space map, like territory and all that. And my first solution was this horrible, like, spatter pattern thing. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just awful, right? And what I really hate about this map is everything just feels arbitrary in its placement. It's like, why... Like, I guess these were meant to represent, like, star bases. And, of course, there's no thought into any of this, right? Like... Why do we need a star base in the middle of nowhere, completely independent of any major trade routes, completely independent of of really anything? Oh, God. So, yeah, this is where we're starting from. And I, I guess they can't sue me for this now, but, you know, all these nebula effects we just ripped off from uh, Galactic Civilizations 2 or 3 or whatever one was out at the time, 3, maybe 2. We just took the PNGs from that game and stuck them in this map. Uh, that's how lazy we were. And not to mention that, just like the etymology of all these star systems, no thought was was put into this. Uh, I mean, you can see we got a we got a star system here called Molotov Prime. Why is it called Molotov Prime when no other star system is? Like, it's uh, it was ridiculous. So, yeah, not a lot of thought. Random fleet bases, Eleventh Fleet HQ in Vladivostok. Okay, uh, Germany. Uh, you know, it's all it's all the same. I guess we distinguish between fleets and SS fleets back in the day. When I say that early Dawn of Victory had a lot of like problems, this is kind of what I mean. This is like no no thought into any of this stuff. Uh, we wanted to rip off Alien, so we had a planet called Archeon. I just put oh fuck, god damn it! I, I didn't even make this connection, but like talk about full goddamn circle. Hazard stripes, hazard stripes. I, I'm guilty of this. Good lord. I don't know what this means, but it can't be. It can't be good. Oh boy. Yeah. So again, just really fucking lazy. Um, you can see with the maps too, or not the maps. Sorry, the flags. I think America is using the exact same flag as it. Wait, no. This is the flag from the '40s, right? Because of the way the stars. Yeah, so this is literally the flag from the 1940s. I guess I can give myself, or past Mark, a bit of credit for at least considering that angle. But then, like, no changes whatsoever. Uh, the Andrean Republic is what the Pacific States of America were called at the time. And it was literally half the United States flag, half the flag of Japan for some reason. And then the stars from Micronesia just, like, put on top of it for, for again, I don't know what, what the hell that was all about. But, uh, yeah. France, you know, same French flag with the coat of arms in there. Oceania, uh, which I think is Australasia now in the new version of the canon. But again, I I don't know what was going on in this flag, but it's not terrible. It's just really, really boring. And the United Kingdom. I think this one kind of holds up a bit. I think it's just the Canadian coat of arms over the Union Jack. But I'm sure if you know anything about coat of arms and precedence and all that stuff, this is a disaster. Uh, and then... <laughs> We had some minor powers um, added because we wanted to make the universe, you know, feel bigger, but we didn't want to put a lot of work into it. So we have, I think the original name for them was the Tawheed, which means truth in Islam. I'm, I'm going to butcher that. I'm sorry, but I, I know that Tawheed as a concept is important. And of course, like we didn't know why. There was no thought put into why they're calling themselves uh, Tawheed. Um, and the flag is like the flag of Singapore with like the 
coat of arms of Iran over top of a star. Like, it's just, it's real, real, real rough. And then Japan, we're using the naval war flag for, again, some reason. I think just to really emphasize the World War II nature the setting had back in the day. But uh, yeah, this is what it looked like. Um, any huge questions about this before I uh, move on to the next iteration? And actually, I'm just realizing now, so I made this on an old CRT monitor, right? And I didn't even realize that you could see the edges in the background star map, so... I had no idea that it looked this crappy up until now. Oh yeah! And we also had the, uh, the Synfaxi were actually appearing on the map. And we gave them this symbol. Um, I think this was based on, uh, the War of the Worlds. Uh, the aliens in that have, um... I'm talking about the 1950s version. Like, they have these lights on their flying machines. It's, like, green, blue, red. I think that's how they look. Anyhow. So an old version of, of DOV, the, the Synfaxi were right on on the map. Hey, and there's Corey Loses in chat saying... Does this mean you're dropping a surprise version of Dawn of Victory for Empire at War today? Uh, that is a negative. Uh, whoops. I also spoilers. Sorry. Uh, no, that's a negative. Uh, Dawn of Victory, the mod for Empire War, still in uh, still in production. We're estimating a release date of mid two thousand seven. So, fingers crossed. Uh, but yeah, so that was. I'm not even sure if Italy. No, okay, here we go. I mean, okay, I want to analyze this a bit more because you can kind of see where like modern DOV is coming from. Like, even though this map is old as shit, uh, there are some similarities. So we got you know Seoul, we got Alpha Centauri. Sirius, Tau City, Rigel, I don't know what's going on. Oh yeah, isn't Rigel just another name for Alpha Centauri? So, yeah, Old Mark didn't quite figure that out. Old Mark also forgot to line up the, the line with the <laughs> with Proxima Centauri, so yeah. But, you know, you can see a lot of the stuff here. We got Vega, Sirius, Tau City, Vesta. Heinlein is still there. Uh, New Geneva, Galeria, and Italia and Novus Roma were our two Italian systems. So, yeah, not a lot. And Tenarsis, these are all important planets throughout DOV Canada. I don't know if they've made it into the new one yet, but uh, I guess that's all I can really talk about for this one. Okay, so, yeah, this is uh, what the map looked like. And eventually, uh, it should be said, we will be doing a, an episode on making a star map for our Way of World Building series. So consider this kind of a preview of that. Uh, okay, so map looked like this. And I guess I was happy with it for a while at least, and then we turned it into this. Just to give you a... <laughs> and the common theme that you're gonna see in uh, in these in the changes we make to this map is that we kept adding more and more smaller powers because we realized that like the, the universe was too boring when the superpowers had like nothing to fight over. Um, like in this, there are two star systems between the German Reich and the Soviet Union that haven't been claimed. So, like, that's that's kind of it. That's, there's not a lot of border territories to these powers. Like, they're right up against each other, which, I don't know, it didn't make for interesting storytelling. So, we started changing things. First thing we did, added way more powers. Now, now Vega is its own nation. It's home to the new Weimar Republic. Alpha Centauri has the United Centauri Protectorates. We got Brazil. There are nations on Tau Ceti and Sirius. And elsewhere, we got the Kingdom of Cooper. I guess I wasn't really opposed to uh, monarchies back in the day. Uh, and we got the Luctopia Confederacy, which was supposed to be like a pirate faction uh, named after my friend. Uh, yeah, the Islamic Republic of Tahid at least has a more appropriate flag. And I think that flag holds up. I think that's a good one. But we also have the Federal Nordic Cooperative. Uh, None of their star systems have anything to do with Nordic heritage or Nordic names for whatever reason. Like Newhall and Miranda. Ugh. And, and you can see, like, no thought at all went into how these lines are placed, right? Like, how do you get to the capital of the Federal Nordic Cooperative if, if not by going through the Islamic Republic of Tahid? Like, there's no connect. I don't know. It's just, it, this wasn't very good, is what I'm trying to say. And hopefully, I'm doing a suitable enough explanation of, of saying why, but. Again, improvements on the flags as you're moving along here, but same problems as before. Oh yeah, and at least we're starting to like remember that other nations exist. Like we, we finally remembered Korea, 
So we put them just on a random planet near Japan. Not a lot of thought. That was just about it. Oh yeah, but there, another addition. Uh, we added this down here, and they didn't tell anyone what it was because we wanted to make it seem mysterious. But then we provided no additional information, so no one really knew what it was about. Uh, yeah. And then Toucan Man is asking about the Obsidian State. Yes, uh, the Obsidian State. Let's uh. This was on Iskander, and this was our attempt at like space North Korea. Um, again, no thought put into it. Why do they call themselves the Obsidian State? Because it sounds cool, and and that was the extent of uh, of our of the thought that I was putting getting uh, put into this. Hey, and thanks for the super chat, Hail Crimson King. I will get to that just at the end here before, after we've kind of gotten through all these uh, the past versions of the map. But again, what we're starting to do in this latest iteration is to uh, or this newer one is to start adding like more star systems between the powers to make things more interesting. Now we got, I, I guess this was supposed to be like the new Synfaxi zone. There was supposed to be like Starbase Sierra, who knows what that was about, but forbidden space. More importantly though, starting to define the area between the Soviet Union and the German Reich. Now we got an actual border territory that they can fight over and the border territory is getting uh, more interesting because we have a bunch of nations on Tenarsis. Yeah, German, Soviet German conflict, Orson, Sonarza Cedar. Hey, and uh, the Hammerhead Depths is here. Uh, fans of Battlefleet Gothic will remember the Hammerhead Deeps from uh, from that game. And so we put the Hammerhead Depths into this map, and then we put the Dwanga Deeps into the newest one. So, you know, there's a, a real lineage going on here, a real history to it. Other major changes, yeah, we added Italy as its own independent entity. Like, originally, Italy was not its own nation. It was just part of the Germans. Uh, like, there was really only four countries in the whole universe, which was ridiculous. But, all right, so here's uh, how the map was looking, second iteration. Now, we got on to the third one. And we've made it into the 1980s because, I mean, we've gone neon. And I can actually explain why I thought this was uh, a good idea. Representing political territory on a 3D, or on what's supposed to be a 3D space map, is incredibly challenging, right? And I think a lot of um, designers will attempt, like, some version of this, where it's, like, lines and there's color around them, right? Like, this doesn't look entirely uh, unlike Stellaris or Galactic Civilizations or, you know, whatever game you want to play. Obviously, the... The implementation wasn't great, but the idea was here that, like, if borders are being established in space, then they would follow, like, grid coordinates. So it would be, like, really, really kind of jagged and, and have these, like, hard edges to them. That that was the, the thinking, anyways. And I don't hate this. I think this actually kind of looks... I mean, the neon is a bit much, right? Like, we, could, we should turn down the, the saturation of this just to help everyone's eyes. Yeah, but, uh... I, I I do like the way that we have like the the theater of war kind of overlapping the um, you know part of each nation's territory, but also the borderlands. I think that's kind of cool. We do the same thing in Vega, but the rest of it, I don't know. I mean, I'll turn off that hue saturation so you can see what it was actually like. But more of the same, except now we got like these jagged things. And we finally revealed what the uh, the bottom part of the map was. This was the Shinaka Shinaka Splinter Kingdoms. Uh, who knows what the hell that's all about? I mean, I kind of do because I do remember these guys, and uh, they are in the current version of the canon. But I ain't talking shit about them because we haven't figured that out yet. And also, there's no way we're calling them the Shinaka again. So uh i don't want to talk too much about it because this goes into like the deep dov lore that we got to get into later on but the idea here is that we wanted to make it so the synfaxi weren't the only alien species uh, in the galaxy so that was the intent there whether or not we succeeded i'd say we didn't uh meanwhile the synfaxi quarantine zone in stark contrast to the human nations we wanted to have it have like this kind of big curve that like presumably the the quarantine zone is way bigger than this, and we just can't see it. But again, I think this just looks dumb. Uh, and I guess in this version of the story, the Synfaxi were like expanding outwards or something. Like, 
it looks it looks like a sun is what it looks like which uh i don't know any other details on this one i don't think so i think that's like the major stuff that changed there japan keeps looking like a banana though they did not turn out well in this version of the map i i feel bad all right next version okay things are starting to take a turn so the name of the game at this point was we're going to keep adding more and more factions because it was getting increasingly obvious that uh, with only a sliver of the world represented in this universe, it was coming across as kind of problematic, I guess you would say nowadays. So a lot of changes. First of all, we have a new background, which is attempting just to make it look more interesting, right? Because this is uh, pretty boring, right? Like just stars. So. Throw in some nebula to make it look nice. The problem was, this was literally just a photo taken from, uh, I think, like, one of the NASA websites or the Hubble website. So, like, the relationship between the background image and the stars and the planets and the star systems, all that stuff is completely non-existent. So, this is really just filler. It's doing nothing. But, we've moved away from the neon stuff and still trying to figure out how to represent territory. And the new solution was just like a bunch of weird jagged lines and i don't know why i thought this was appropriate um like it, the, everything about this just feels so arbitrary right like why does soviet territory expand like or expand slightly outwards here like why like it's just you know there's no good way to represent territory in space but i know this way kind of sucks so this is uh and like especially these gaps like does the soviet union not claim territory between its own stars or I don't know, it's just, it's super weird. But we are getting a bit closer towards the modern uh, version of the canon. So now we have Spain, finally uh, a part of the universe, except Spain is like way out on the edge. So they're like a frontier colony, even though realistically you'd think they'd be closer to the center if they're getting away from Earth, but whatever. Hey, no one was thinking about these things at the time. Italy is separate. There's a bigger border region, I think. Um, oh, God. Okay, so this is where, like, my own ignorance really comes into play. Uh, and I can only say that this did come from a place of total total ignorance, and this is extremely embarrassing, and, and I guess all I can do is own up to it, right? So, we were really, like, wanting to be kind of edgy at this point in the setting. Like, we have the German Reich, we have the Soviet Union, like, we have the Empire of Japan. What else can we add into this fucking soup? Oh, how about, like, a shitload of confederate nations? And, and this is, again, my only, my only defense is that I'm from Canada. I thought this shit was, like, done and old. It's, like, I, I didn't realize that the confederacy was, was such a fucking awful part of American culture to this day uh, until I went to Dragon Con and Aaron heard people talk about growing up uh, in the south and, and fucking KKK towns and all this shit. So... Yeah, this is um, what it looks like when you're world building as a moron 19, 20 year old who thinks he's way smarter than he actually is, thinks this is a fucking good idea. So, huh, you know, if uh, that's the, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I, I got no defense for this other than it's fucking awful. Uh, but we are adding some more nations, we're at least trying to be more representative. Um, Thailand's now part of this, Korea is now actually appearing on the map as a major uh, nation alongside the Obsidian State, which is still there. Uh, Commonwealth of Tau City has its own nation. I don't know if that, did the previous one have it too? No, they didn't. So yeah, adding more nations here. We got the Federative Republic of Rigel Gantaris, <laughs> the Commonwealth of Tau City. We're, we're adding more. Uh, Luctopia is still there. Islamic Republic of Tahid. And you can see I'm starting to like kind of fix the the uh, the uh, the whatever we're calling them the the cosmic strings in this version. So now you can actually get from Germany to the uh, FNC, etc. Uh, apart from that, though, I think this is the main changes. Everything else looks more or less the same to my eyes. Yeah, we're back to like this weird thing on the map. It's just a lot of arbitrary decisions without really knowing what I'm doing. But, uh, oh yeah, we got more nations on Sirius now. And this is, like, I think where modern DOV maybe comes from. Uh, because the idea here was that Sirius was going to be split between 
you know, the communists, uh, the Imperial Japanese, and um, the Democratic Federation, which is what we called Odo back in the day. So the idea that a, a planet might be split between three different nations, each aligned to three different ideological blocks, was like kind of mind blowing at the time. And then it was like, holy shit, like we need to repeat this everywhere. So uh, that takes us into the next one. So now we're switching things up again. And at this point, I hate the map, and I'm trying to fix it. Uh, and the idea was just embrace kind of um, the design of it rather than trying to make it look realistic or cool. So this was like me when I'm just learning how to use Photoshop and, and getting better at information design. And I think this is actually our first like major improvement, because number one, uh, the map has been tilted slightly, so the placement of each of the nations is like more interesting, because before, it's literally like almost just a square, right? Like, I mean, it really is a square. You got Germany, the the Federation, the Soviets, and the Synfaxi. Nice big square, Japan in the middle. Now, I mean, it's still a square, but I'm at least attempting to like make it appear less boring. So I think I've mostly achieved that just by uh, adding these things on the side. But uh, let's look over the, uh, the major changes. So yeah, the major players are still there. We got the Federated Republic, we got the Commonwealth. Alpha Centauri. Hey, Brazil is on the map now. Were they part of this before? When did they get at? Oh, yeah. So Brazil was here. Oh, it's here. So Brazil is older than I realized. So Brazil. Oh, shit. Brazil is really old. Okay. But uh, yeah, so the idea here was to embrace um, legibility. So the, the font has been changed, thank God, to something actually readable. Uh, there is a temptation when designing like science fiction stuff to, to use like a, a sci-fi font. Which is why, like, because everyone, I'm sure everyone has seen at least something where the A is written out as, like, just like a like an arrow. There's no, like, line in the center. Like, Stargate does that, but at least they have a point. Um, but yeah, so my point is, choose a good font. Don't do something, like, really sci-fi looking, because as soon as you zoom out even slightly, all of a sudden you can't read shit. This, this looks good. This is legible and modern, and design-wise, I think this actually looks kind of cool. Um, especially the superpowers, which I think this is, is kind of looking cool. I don't know. I think like design wise, that's good. I think this, that holds up again, like the, the thinking behind what planets are named. There was, was non-existent. There was not a lot going on here. Also got rid of the flags, which I need to praise old Mark for because that must've been hard for him. It's like really tempting to want to put as much personality into these. Uh, nations as possible so restraint is sometimes necessary but with that you lose like which part of this blue blob is america which part is is uh, the united kingdom which part is you know france you can kind of tell by the names of the the planets but it would still be nicer to to have a i don't know something definitive uh lakeside tr or sorry uh nihil asking um why are the lines curved I think the intent, and it's been like, you know, 100 years, but um, I thought that curved lines would make it seem more 3D. I don't know why I thought that, because, like, why wouldn't you just go in a straight line? Uh, it definitely wasn't because we were trying to indicate that, like, the ships were actually, like, curving on these routes. Like, that it wasn't, I, I don't know, it was it was a stupid decision with no thought, but anyway, it was going to be the explanation for a lot of stuff in these older maps. Uh, oh, shit! But, hey! New uh, new Canaan made it on! Is this the first appearance of New Canaan? Uh, it might be. Wait, is that them? Yeah, New, new Canaan's here. Okay, New Canaan was there. And it's on this one. And it's on this one. Holy shit! It's, it comes in on the second version. All right, so uh, New Canaan is... Uh, wait, let me... Uh, sorry, I'm going to turn off that. I'm going to be distracted here. So, yeah. New Canaan been a part of the, the DOV canon for a while, I guess. And I guess you thought it was a good idea to put the state of Judea on there and the Republic of Canaan. Yeah, I don't know. We were not thinking about this stuff. It was just, what nations are we missing? Let's put them on here. Uh, yeah, so I think that's all the interesting stuff. I'm amazed that uh, the concept of Luketopia has survived this long, simply because if we're trying to be serious, why do we have a place called Luketopia? 
God, that was that was tough. But one thing I do like is we've added on these like pirate activity symbols, which are kind of interesting. I've been experimenting with a way to include that in the new version of the map, but uh, I don't know. It might just be too much. We've also got Wrecked Hull Station, which is a... We, were, we started, like, we made the the old wiki version of Dawn of Victory open to the public so anyone could edit it, which was a disaster. But every now and then, people would add cool things, and I would add it onto this map. Not enough to really save it, though. Oh, yeah. Now we got the territories showing up on the map. Uh, meant to just add some variety to the, to the section of space that we're in. And they will be uh, returning. But, yeah, and then... I don't know, solar systems on the side seemed like a good idea just to add more detail and to indicate that, you know, each of these symbols here was in fact a uh, an entire star system, not a planet, because people were being uh, confused about that. So, not a whole lot of thought put into any of this stuff. Yeah, we even put Luketopia on the side, like how is that a good idea? Pirate Rex and, yeah. Oh, and then we actually have the planets themselves. Vega, Juno, Joseph, and Sirius. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess that's something. Uh, Everul asking, what was in the territories? What indeed? I might have an answer for you. Let's check the next map, because I do have... Yeah, here we go. So, at this point, I'm getting tired of indicating political territory like it, again this feels completely arbitrary like why is there this giant jagged thing in the middle of German territory it makes no sense so the new idea was we're going to to color the star systems and the lines between them rather than everything around them and I think this is actually work hey what the hell is going on here I guess at some point I was marking off star systems no idea why so I am sorry ignore these lines don't know what they're for. Again, don't hate this version. I think the curved lines are, are pointless and, and kind of dumb. But uh, I don't know. There's worse things. And the major addition to this one was just more star systems. I don't know if the ones in the center are new, but we definitely added a whole shitload on the edge. And the idea here was that we wanted to start bringing in like the frontier. Like, again... In the original version of the map, like, space is very contained. There is... There are superpowers, and then there's nothing. There, there's nothing outside of any of this. It's, it's... Yeah, it's pointless. But, at this point, we're like, well, let's start adding more stuff. So now we have, like, a bunch of star systems right on the edge. And a lot of these have great names that I think we need to bring back. In fact, we probably already have... Is there... Oh, yeah. So, uh... Union was a star system that an old DOV lore was the uh, the biggest kind of colonized uh, star system on the edge of space and it's been brought back into the current canon this time as Reunion which I think is kind of clever. Uh, what else? I don't know just a shitload of more planets uh, star systems on the edge and then going back to the the territories um, the, the notion here was just, like, make it creepy somehow. So we gave it three star systems, uh, each named after the three fates, I believe, from Greek mythology. And the idea was, like, you would go in here, and, like, as soon as you passed this border, all communication with the outside was, like, impossible. So it's like, while you're in the territories, you can't communicate uh, with anybody outside of it. Which, I don't know, that's an, it's an interesting concept, I guess. I think we can make it better in the current version of the setting, though, so... But I'm actually very impressed with old Mark. I don't know how, or young Mark, maybe, but I, I like all the star systems he's added. It's, uh, we're finally getting somewhere. Zone of Exclusion. I don't know why this is the Zone of Exclusion. I think we were removing any references to the, the whatever they were called, the, the Splinter Kingdoms. Yeah, they last show up here, and then they just disappear from the map. With, I guess, the intent being that we wanted to make them more mysterious, so we'll just, uh... I don't know. We'll just uh, remove them. Yeah. You'll also notice that the name of the uh, the allied faction like keeps changing because we were never happy with it. It was at first the uh, what do we call it? The Democratic Federation, and then the Federation of Allied Worlds. And I think it's going to go back to 
Democratic Federation right after this. So I think this was like the last version of the map where we were at least trying to keep all the star systems in the same place. Like, I might be crazy, but actually, look, there's a better way to do this. Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself. That was a spoiler. Eh. I think you can actually line them up so they carry over. So Soul is here. Okay, never mind. I'm completely wrong. So I wait. Did I rotate it somehow? I think that like I wasn't actually moving anything. I think I was just rotating stuff. Is that? Am I wasting everyone's time? No, I got it. Okay, here we go. Look at that. Holy shit! It lines up perfectly. So even though we're like, you know, I don't know how many years, four or five years into this map, uh, the placement of the stars hasn't changed at all. Like we've added new ones. But Vega has always been there. Rigel is now Vesta, I guess. Tau City has always been there. Alpha Centauri. So that's interesting. And the idea there was that we didn't want to invalidate all these maps we've been releasing over and over again by changing the placement of stuff. So, yeah. More or less the same from the early, uh, early one. But at some point, uh, the limitations of those placements was becoming too severe and I just felt like the, the, the way that these nations were, were aligned in the star map was like not interesting enough and we needed to to add more so uh, now we are into like the the I don't know the end of the the classic DOV era and this was the new map or the new old map I guess what this was an older map that was newer than the first ones let's say that I don't know but uh, the idea here was, let's bring back an interesting background. Let's make it actually, like, interesting uh, to look at this thing. And the idea there was just to bring in, like, a shitload of, of photos of, like, clouds and nebula. And we just photo bashed it um, until it kind of gave us this arm-looking shape. So this was literally supposed to be the extent of, of the Orion arm. So, I don't know. I think this is where, like... Me, as a graphic designer, I'm kind of actually getting kind of decent. Maybe, I don't know. But uh, it's also kind of hard to read, so maybe I shouldn't be praising myself so much here. But at, at this point, I think we're getting to, like, what the modern DOV map looks like, right? Like, this isn't completely insane compared to what it looks like now. Uh, I mean, let's get rid of that. But yeah, so we got Soul is around there, Alpha Centauri, Vega is there. Japan kind of to the left and yeah, this is feeling very familiar In terms of like the changes that were made to this map. I mean everything is different um, There was an attempt to add more star systems between each of the major powers just to give them more to fight over So now the German Soviet border is uh, like four star systems. Hey, the territories are still there And we're just adding like a bunch more details onto the edge of this thing to give the impression that the universe is, you know, sprawling and huge. The Arrowhead Spur, that's a good name. The Marches. The Far Frontier, there it is. And uh, the Far Frontier is another one of those things that has made it into the uh, the current Dawn of Victory uh, canon. So, I mean, I don't know, maybe I should release these for, at, for the public at some point. Maybe when I talk about it in that video, but it's kind of interesting how many of these names, like, keep reappearing. But yeah, that's where we are now. And then I guess this takes us to the uh, the final version of the old map, which was this one. And I think uh, this is great. I think this is about like the limit of what I am capable of, of doing on my own. Uh, if you are a fan of Stellaris Invicta, you will note that in both season one and I think season two, maybe? Uh, we use the same style for some of the maps of, of uh, our Stellaris game. And all this is, is these background nebula were generated in some program, like a nebula renderer kind of thing. And I just placed them all until we kind of got the impression of uh, of the arm. It's not quite as striking as like the old one. I feel like we lost a bit of the cohesion and the depth of it. But I think this is easier to read and more, I don't know, it's easier on the eyes at the very least. And it allowed me to be a bit more, um, I don't know, intentional with the use of color. So, like, for the first time, 
we got the Sea of Clouds is here. And it's separating uh, the UK and Australia. But it's just like, it's just a bit of blue, right? Like, there's nothing really to this. It's, it's, it's nice. I like it. But, like, you don't really get the sense of this being a beautiful part of the galaxy. It's just a bit of, there's no detail to it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, at the same time, though, I think it works. I, I don't think this is necessarily bad. And I think if, uh, if Tim had actually, you know, not been able to work with us or, you know, not been available or, or whoever, like if, if it was all down to me in making a new map, I think I probably would have tried the same style because I think this, I think this works. Uh, in terms of the map itself, I don't know how much there's really worth talking about. I don't know how much this has changed. I mean, probably not too much. It looks, oh, no, I guess it's kind of different. Uh, you can see I'm trying to add names to different regions just to give the the map some personality. We got the Sea of Clouds, the Sinai Rift, that's a bit on the nose there, Mark. The Eisenbach Rift, the Vega Cloud. Hey, and the new Canaan Corridor. Is that the first example of that name being used? I don't know. Oh, no, it's here too. The new Canaan Corridor. Was it over here? Yeah, so the new Canaan Corridor, another older part of uh, DOB lore. Why it's called the New Canon Corridor, I don't know. I guess because it connects California and Japan. So, I don't know. It's interesting to see where the modern ideas are coming from, even if they weren't fully formed back in the day. But I do like the way this looks. I think this is solid-ish. Hey! And these guys are back. We called them... What did we call them before? First, they were called the Shinaka Splinter Kingdoms. And now we're calling them the Charismian Shah, which I am almost certain is um, a, a reference to a tribe in the Middle East that got eradicated by the Mongols or something. I don't know. That's Char Charismian Shah sounds very familiar. I, I think I was ripping somebody off. But uh, yeah, that was the oldest uh, version of that. And again, I think this actually looks kind of great. I don't hate the design of this but in terms of world building it has all the same problems as before right like no thought given to why planets named what they are no attempt to you know actually represent the the culture of of japan or germany or you know anyone else it's just like a 10 second google search and that's the name of the planet so hopefully this isn't too offensive um even if some of the names aren't great by modern standards but uh, oh yeah the channel was separating French or France and the UK. Like, I don't know. It's clever, but it's it's very very obvious. Like we went for the the most obvious names at all possible times. So yeah. So that is uh, kind of where we left things off. So I don't know. Throw me any questions you might have about map design or any of these progression things, and I'll read out super chats. Uh, well, that's happening. Okay. A uh, different idea for the Elysium Fields. Okay, so let's go back to that for a second. Elysium Fields. Uh, given it is Italy and the Vatican, how about the Paradiso Sphere? Inspiration from Dante and Italy moving to the stars. Uh, don't hate the general concept. I'm not sure about the name. I think that might be a bit too dramatic. But uh, I believe in the current version of the wiki, which I'll do my best to link here. Uh, if you go to Astropolitics, I think Italy is part of something called the Pact of Rome. Uh, and that's something we will be expanding. We want Italy to have its own uh, alliance system independent of the Axis, just because Italy is trying to uh, be an, uh, an imperial power, even if it doesn't quite have the, the reach. Okay, uh, Dominion42, and thank you very much for the Super Chats, by the way. It helps keep the lights on and uh, medication down my throat, which is <laughs> appreciated and <coughs> oh, sorry, necessary. Uh, okay, Dominion42 saying that first map, I assume you mean this one, uh, is the quality I could make right now with a little more polish with graphics, and yet you're calling it crappy. Goes to show the quality you're aiming for. Looking forward to see how this evolves. Well, you know, it, it sucks, right? Because, like, part of world building isn't just being creative. Part of world building, unfortunately, comes down to, like, graphic design and, and making maps and all this stuff. But, I don't know. Even though uh, this is kind of crappy, I think if I had taken this to, like, an actual designer and been like, hey, this is, like, kind of my idea. Can you turn this into something? You know, that's not a detriment. Like, you don't need to be perfect at everything. You can uh, throw stuff out to uh, third parties if you have the resources to do so, which, of course, not everyone does. So, yeah, it, it sucks, but that's just the nature of the, pro of the 
process, right? But I appreciate that uh, <laughs> you're looking forward to uh, to where things are going and the quality we're aiming for. But uh, yeah. All right, Imperator Zor. Hey, there's a name I remember. Saying, uh, the Empire of Japan and Dawn of Victory has developed a new technology, the Cat Girl Transformation Chamber. All shall be assimilated. N yeah. Ugh. Was that, like, I, I feel like that was just a deliberate attempt to have me say these words out loud. So that you can now say, yep, yeah, cat girls are canon. What can you do? I'll tell you one thing. In both 2006 and 2024, as soon as we, or 2023, as soon as we launched a, uh, a separate channel for the uh, the Sphere and Japan in our Discord server. The very first question was, is there anime in Japan? And yes, first question in, two, in 2006, first question in 2023. So that's all anyone cares about is anime. And Jacob Miller saying, I knew War of the Worlds was an influence. The 53 version is the best. Yes, I agree. That's the only movie that actually shows the war. I don't know what Spielberg was thinking when he was like, what if we showed Dakota Fanning screaming a lot well, awesome stuff is happening off frame. So, what can you do? All right, now for the non super chats. What do we got? Um, any like pressing questions? Maybe. Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> All I'm seeing is down with the weebs. I guess that. Uh... Oh, here's a good one. Um, Nahil asking, "What do you use to signify territories in the current map?" So. In the current map, I'm trying not to wait by territories. Do you mean like political uh, borders or do you mean like the different regions? Because in the case of political borders, I am not bothering at all with um, with trying to map out, you know, a line or something or a, a giant uh, blob around a country like we are not doing. How do I do this? I guess like we could do something like this and I, I just feel like this it clutters up the map too much they look completely arbitrary and we're covering up the amazing background that Tim has done so I feel like we don't gain anything by having these these blobs of territory I just uh yeah I, I don't think that I, this way lies madness is how I'll say it instead we're relying on these little symbols um for each of our star systems so the symbols will tell you which uh, country owns what, while star, star systems that are split between multiple nations will have this, and star systems with no nation or no you know massive human presence will just be dots. So this way you can like see the background, and yet you still get a sense of what the politics are looking like. And I think I think this is the best solution. This is something I struggled with because it is nice to be able to at a glance like see where the Soviet Union is. But I feel like this gives you more information because you can tell, you know, Pakistan apart from India without just being like a mess of blobs. So that is the thinking there. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, another super chat. Thank you very much. Uh, Kejitan asking, where is Space Poland? Space Poland is just past the Tannhauser Gate and somewhere around here. Uh, it's not really ready yet. We're still working on it, so unfortunately I can't show it off, but uh, Poland is right around there. Unfortunately, it's between the Soviets and the Germans again, because, you know, sometimes history rhymes in a, in a, bad, uh, <laughs> in a bad way. Okay, uh, Seal King asking, where are the Eastern European countries? Well, we're starting to add some. In terms of like the classic Eastern European countries like uh, Hungary, uh, I don't know, uh, Romania, those places, probably somewhere around here. Uh, again, haven't added them to the map yet, but we are adding more colonies um, with European heritage, East Europe among them. So, uh, Mangrobello, Tridenti, Asita, Asita, Trapani. Giramondo, these are all independent colonies with uh, European, well, mostly European. I guess they're all multicultural to some extent just because of the way the evacuations worked out, but maybe a slim or uh, the largest minority is European, let's say that, in, in, these, in these countries here. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. hoping to get mostly questions about like the, the map progression because that's something I can talk about without it feeling like we're going completely off topic here, but I appreciate all the interest. Um... 
to do, do, do space hungry where <clears throat> yeah right around there oh, sorry ah sorry yeah throat is still not uh back uh to 100 but here's an interesting question dear mr templin stew please please call me mark mr templin stew was my father um, will there be a major technological special specialization, such as one country going heavily into cybernetics, another into genome changing, etc.? Uh, probably not. Uh, I, I would say that the extent to which different countries invest in different technologies would be reflective of the modern world. So you do see, like, variations, right? Like, so in the Cold War, um, to put it broadly and to leave out all the nuance, you know, the Warsaw Pact was investing heavily into <clears throat> uh, self-propelled anti-air compared to NATO, um, which counted on having air superiority. So that's like a sense of where priorities are different. But in terms of like something really dramatic where, you know, one nation has all cyborg armies and one na nation has all genetically modified alien armies, nothing that extreme. But you will see differences between the different powers and between the different blocks. Um, in terms of like what makes the nations unique, it's mostly going to be ideology and culture and perspective rather than some crazy technological imbalance uh, is kind of what I'm going for. Uh, are there any space Amish in the setting? Um, yeah, I would say like certainly one of the uh, appealing aspects of this setting, I think, is that because there's like such an abundance of, of territory and an abundance of planets that anyone who kind of wants their own star system themselves can like can find one so it's not crazy to think that maybe some like a group of families settles a, uh, a star system in the far frontier and decides you know what our community we're, we're abandoning technology now that we're here we found paradise to hell with it so certainly smaller colonies like that uh, definitely exist uh, oh god, okay, here's a tough one. Uh, to settle a common question in the Discord, what happened to the Zionist movement in DOV? So this is like a huge topic, right? This is a, th this is something I'm completely ignorant and should not be speaking on, right now at least. Um, eventually, like, I think this is important to people. I think people want to know what happens to, to Israel or, or whatever the equivalent is in Dawn of Victory, but I don't want to idly speculate on what that is just because... That is a good way to end up with something, you know, like, like this, where I just say some shit or put on some shit without any thought given into it. So, I don't know. When it comes to heavy questions like that, it's not something I can give you a, a solid answer for right now. It's something that's going to have to evolve and be, uh, I don't know, researched over over time. So, sorry, that's kind of a shitty answer, I know, but it is the, uh, it's kind of where we're at. And can you give a basic alignment for each of the nations in Elysium Fields? Yeah, I don't want to... This is all in flux is what I'll say. This isn't solid yet. Like, I got an idea and it's basically like, now that the map is kind of coming together, is the idea going to work? So the idea was, um, each of these three star systems are independent and they hate each other. Probably like a big rivalry going on between these three. And yet all three are also in the Italian or maybe the Axis sphere. So it's like a rivalry within the Axis or within the Italian sphere at the very least. Um, so ostensibly on the same side, in reality, major rivals and competitors, uh, Trapani and Giromondo, not sure about these ones. Um, and honestly, I think in the future, in the next stream maybe, I think the name of the game is going to be to expand the Elysium fields quite a bit and add like maybe another dozen nations in here like spread out between from like here to here and just make this a giant mess of independent colonies that are now split between Oto, uh the axis the italians you know maybe argentina has like their pet colony maybe brazil does too so the elysium fields need to become a giant mess and right now they're only a partial mess so next stream i think we'll we'll delve deep into the the fields unless we rename it in which case we'll delve deeply into Whatever this is called. Uh, this isn't really uh, related, but uh, I'll read it out. Hey, Mark, excited for the Fallout show that's releasing today. Yes, I am. That is why uh, this stream is slightly earlier than usual, because I need to recover after and uh, get to watching Fallout. So, yeah. <clears throat> 
Uh, what was the idea to show piracy? I think, do I actually have it on this version? I might be able to show you. Uh, yes, okay, here we go. Uh, this was a test I was doing, and the idea was to put some symbols on the map just um, in areas that were particularly dangerous. And I don't hate this idea. I, I think it's maybe fine. I just worry that if we keep going down this road, the map is going to end up very cluttered, so... Whether these stay on, that's a heavy maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it uh, comes together. Uh, okay, uh, any plans to make 3D maps in the future? Uh, I wouldn't say plans, but I'd say idle speculation. I think... Um, I mean, the, the 2D map is a, is a big enough endeavor on its own, right? Like, it's taken us four months to, to get here. Um, obviously, some of that's my fault. I've been sick a lot, but... Um, yeah, I'll finish the 2D map, and then I'll worry about a 3D map. But uh, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to be able to kind of, like, rotate this around and see the, the Z-axis more clearly. What would be really cool and probably impossible would be to, like, have a 3D modeler, like model nebula in 3d space so you could like uh, that's probably impossible right like how do you i don't know maybe actually tim was telling me uh when we were really getting like the map going from from the like day one um he is able to like render out 3d nebula and we could do that in 3d space and, and have these nebula there but i think my problem was that if we went that route it would be harder to to show like the depth of space, like, I, or it wouldn't look as, as custom, I guess? I, I don't know how to describe it, but there was definitely, like, a, a look I was going for, and it's, like, this as opposed to the more, like, 3D-generated stuff. So I don't know if that was the, the right call, but I love it, so it was the right call for me, at least. And sorry, I'm slowly making my way through these comments here. Um, uh, when are you going to do a map-making video? So, the uh, the schedule's been, been thrown about so much. I'm sorry about that. It's It's been a mixture of, like, health stuff, and uh, the project has expanded, like, way bigger and way faster than I thought it would. So, like, right now, we're trying to get stuff ready for December uh, because we think we can get that done. So, it, it's, it's, a, it's a giant mess. But, yeah, basically, the idea is um, each episode of Way of World Building covers one topic, right? So, the next ones, I guess, maybe this is a spoiler, but I guess you... It doesn't hurt to tell anybody. The next episodes are going to be covering, like, standard sci-fi setting, like, a template. Like, if you're starting a setting from day one, what do you look at? That's the first episode. After that, we're doing geopolitics. After that is factions. And then maybe after that will be, like, map making. So, somewhere down the line, at the very least. Uh, hold on. Can we see that again? Yes. But I forget what you were, uh talking about so sorry uh what else our cults based around this in faxy a thousand percent um so another kind of like when we were first talking about dawn of victory i think i divided it into what was it themes inspirations and tenets foundations pillars something like that and one of the pillars of of dawn of victory is that like when earth died a part of like mankind's soul died too because you no longer have all of humanity sharing one planet right like if you are living in the soviet union you are so completely separated from everyone else uh in the universe that i, I feel like it's a lot more isolating and a lot more it, it's an environment in which extreme ideologies can maybe propagate easier so i think uh in that kind of environment, there's uh, a lot of demand, or not demand, what do you call demand for a cult? There's a lot of interest in um, societies, communities that purport to bring people together. So yes, I, I hope that's not too much of a rambling answer. I kind of got lost along the way, but yes, there's weird cults. This is a universe in which that kind of stuff is uh, a problem. Uh, I find that interesting. What kind of inner faction stresses will be in DOV? Yes, yeah, so this is like a huge part of what makes for good world building in general, right? Which is that uh, just as no man is an island, no faction is an island, and that there'll be divisions within each of the major nations, within each of the major nations' subdivisions. Like, there is divisions between these nations all the way down, as with every other group in this um, universe. As opposed for, like, examples of what those divisions are, 
uh, it's going to depend on the faction, right? So in the Soviet Union, at the upper levels of leadership, the the division is between the 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 more the, the hardliners and the um, the reformists. And none of these are really set in Estonia, but that's kind of the general idea. Uh, Soviet Union split between reformists and hardliners. Same for the Germans. Uh, the Japanese, we can go in a really fun direction with them just because we have the historical parallels to, um, you know, the rivalry between the um, the army and the navy is, of course, what everyone thinks of. But I think we want to maybe go a bit... That, that seems a bit too on the nose. I think we can switch things up a bit while still getting that, that same kind of division. Um, as for internal divisions uh, in other nations, I don't know... Like, research needs to be done, right? Like, I am sure... In the politics of Pakistan, there are some sort of... I mean, I don't know enough about the country to say what those divisions would be, but I know they exist, is I guess my answer. So, I hope that's uh, good enough. Hey, another super chat. Axe Baron, thank you very much. Uh, I noticed Sweden, Finland, and Norway are in the Federal Nordic Cooperative on the wiki. Uh, what happened to Denmark? Also, where might the Nordics be? Uh, it never made too much sense why we were stuck between the Dem Fed and Germany next to Tahit. Yes, I agree on all those counts. But uh, to answer your first question, I got some bad news about Denmark. Uh, they suffered from a condition known as being connected by a land border to Germany. Uh, so they did not make it uh, out of Earth as an independent state. So there is probably a, a Danish star system or a Danish state somewhere in the German Reich. You hate to see it, but uh, hey, them's the breaks. Um, as for where the FNC is, I think we're actually going to try to, like, replicate in part where it was uh, in the olden days. Where were they? So if the Federation was here, uh, we have the United Arab Republic around here. FNC was there. So possibly around here. I think we're going to be closer in because Scandinavia, or yeah, sorry, the FNC should not be like on the edge of the frontier. They should be closer to the center, I think. So don't have a solid answer for you, but they're going to be somewhere around here, most likely between the between Odo and the Germans. Um, they'll be one of those major powers that both sides have to worry about, kind of like uh, Poland or maybe India or Brazil for that matter. So somewhere around there. Okay, um, what else do we got? When are you gonna change the Italian symbol? As soon as we have a new design for the Italian flag. I don't know, I think we, we gotta replace this thing, this this fascist, you know, piece of shit with um, something a bit more interesting that looks better at a uh, small size like that. But uh, I don't know what that's gonna be. Maybe we just uh, are lazy and we do the Italian tricolor. I don't think that would be terrible, so. At the moment, though, well, I'll stick with this. Do, 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 do. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, when it comes to the placement of settlements on planets, how concentrated are they? Are they like Starfield, where a settled planet basically has one big city? So it's not quite as crazy as Starfield, um, but it's similar. So the idea is... Uh, I don't know how to really show this on screen, but... Um, like, let's say uh, the United States is colonizing the Philadelphia system or whatever. Because they're also colonizing at the same time, like, dozens of other planets, only a small percentage of the American population ends up on Philadelphia. And the idea is that any settlements built on extrasolar colonies, they're not developing in the same way that cities on Earth do, where you have, like, you know, primitive tribal settlements being built up into grander cities, and then they evolve across the centuries. A century. So even the oldest uh, planets or settled planets in DOV are only a couple centuries old, and they were all designed uh, with intention, right? Like, nothing was done haphazardly. So to answer the question, I guess this is a long answer, but the, the general thinking is uh, every planet, every inhabited planet in DOV has at most, like, 100 million people, and they're concentrated in these giant... Um, not hive cities, but like, if you think about what a hive city would have been before it became a hive city, probably something like Tokyo, right? Where you have a city with, you know, tens of millions of people, maybe more, like a 50 million person city spanning a big section of a continent. And at most you'd have like two or three of those on a planet. So it's a different uh, kind of situation. Like there's no, there's no like hundreds of cities on a single planet. That just doesn't happen anymore. That's like an old earth kind of thing. 
Uh, in fact, I think um, in the Firebase Hector video, we mentioned that there's only three cities on on Razao. And they're all in one section of the planet, and the rest is just like mining encampments and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Uh, any space minefields left around after a war? Yes. If you want to keep your ship, do not park in the Vega system. It is full of mines. How did you come up with the system names? Well, I got an answer for you. We have this uh, document that hopefully was just linked in chat. Um, we've been taking suggestions. We've been looking at all sorts of historical influences. Um, yeah. Okay, my apologies for not being able to... <laughs> to get to every question here. I am kind of reaching the limit of my voice, but I'll try to uh, get to the some more here. Uh, what do we got? Elite Dangerous has a 3D galaxy nav and it's confusing as hell. You essentially have to favor it and type every system you get so lost. So, uh, let me uh, give you another preview for that star map episode I've been working on. But um, the best star map that exists uh, as far as I'm concerned, until this one is finished, is, no judgments, the map for Star Citizen. I think this is, like, so phenomenal what they were able to do here. Um, the only map in existence that uh, actually shows you 3D space in a way that is, like... I mean, it's not, like, the most uh, easy-to-read system, but I think this is, like, about as good as you're going to get in the 3D space. Um, especially how you can, like, show the jump... Uh, Corridors, whatever they're called. Uh, this is about as good as it gets. And even so, I think this has problems. In that, like, it's really hard to, like, get a sense of the political situation. Like, where is Earth in this? It's just kind of everywhere. So as soon as stuff begins to overlap, you lose a lot. But you gain a lot when you're able to rotate it around. So the 3D... Uh, system has its advantages, but it also has a bunch of problems. And I think this also lacks personality. So, like, this is essentially um, just a 3D version of this, right? And I think you, you lose something by not being able to to have these, like, cool these cool features. So, I don't know. Did that in any way uh, answer whatever the question was? I, I, I don't know. That, that's why I was thinking that 2D is more interesting than, than 3D in this in this situation. Uh, any privately owned strings? No, that would be illegal. You can't, uh, well, actually, come back to this. I, uh, that's an interesting question. My, I would say no, because how do you, something to think about. Shit, okay, I'm changing my answer. Maybe. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, have the Axis embraced the dark forest theory? Uh, I don't want to say too much about this, but... I would say that uh, every nation has adopted the Dark Forest theory, except they're not worried about aliens, they're worried about other human powers. So, I mean, that's not quite the same, is it? I guess I would say that, like, there are plenty of reasons and excuses that you can use to, you know, pursue a hundred years of militarization. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh man, I've only just made it now to my Denmark comments, I am way behind. Uh, Axe Baron saying, based, Denmark was never real to begin with. That's what I heard. Um, but then we made peace with them over Hans Island, and now Canada and Denmark are friends, so I am willing to acknowledge they exist as a country. Um, would you try to make an interactive map? Yes. So eventually, uh, this map will be interactive. Um, right now, you can go to uh, map.champlain map group, and um, we're going to set it up so that you can click on the star systems and a bit of information will come up. That's uh, that's long term. It'll be after we finish this first section or something. So, uh, yeah. Da -da 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 -da. What else do we got here? Are there monarchies in Dead on Arrival? Uh, yes, uh, we got the Empire of Japan is the biggest one, followed by constitutional monarchies like the uh, Great Britain and probably some smaller powers in the sphere, like potentially uh, Thailand, potentially other uh, Southeast Asian monarchies. And I think Spain is going to be a monarchy in this one, too, because, uh, I don't know, let's give Spain some some historical coolness. I don't know what do you call it. Da -da 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 -da. 
big, big question I must ask. Are the cities in the Orion Arm as heavily dependent on personal vehicles as they are on Earth currently? No, or please say no. No, they are not. Uh, the car is dead in DOV. Public transportation reigns. Uh, so that also means no flying cars, which eh, kind of sucks. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll try to get to any big ones I've missed here. Uh, is China a homogeneous communist nation or is it divided? Uh, China is divided in the same way that every nation is kind of divided, but maybe China, but more so. So the idea is that um, the Chinese Soviet Socialist Republic is a major part of the USSR. The Republic of China is a major part of the uh, the sphere, the, uh, the Japanese, the Go prosperity sphere. And there's probably a democratic China somewhere, or at least like a colony that exists with a large uh, population of Chinese citizens. So there's a bunch of Chinas, but um, a problem for both the Soviet Union and the uh, and the sphere is that the desire for Chinese unification is there. Um, so that is a uh, point of contention. But again, like Chinese history is something I'm not super well versed in, so I don't want to talk too much shit before I just get everything wrong and insult somebody. So that's where we're at. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I think I'm mostly caught up, and I don't think I have missed any super chats. So yeah, uh, if there's any critical questions that need to get answered right away, let me know. Otherwise, uh, we will end things here and hopefully get back to, to building this map next week or the week after. We'll see how the, the throat's holding up. Da, 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 da. Uh, Ban Singleman. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I can't pronounce that name. Ban Singleman. I think I nailed that. Saying, do you intend to include sovereign nomadic communities, like a large starship or spaceship with tens of thousands of people in it making it from... Uh, probably not. I think that's a bit too too dramatic for, for the setting, which is going to be more grounded and real. Um, there are, like, sovereign... No, not sovereign. There are nomadic communities, right? Like, um... There are there's a whole class of people who don't live on a planet, but instead just their work takes them through the starlings, right? So you can have these big nomadic fleets of of traders and merchants and all that, but they're not their own nation. Like they're still citizens of of something, even if it's just like a colonial republic somewhere out on the edge. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh... What are the political systems of non-aligned nations like India and Brazil? I mean, not necessarily... Probably the same, slightly the same as real life. I don't want to go too crazy in changing everything about what the Indian government is like. Otherwise, why do we use India at all? But, uh, so in the, in the case of India, I don't know too much about Indian politics, but at the very least I can say they are a democracy, they are promoting the non-aligned movement, and they have the same kind of geopolitical interests and ambitions as real life. And Dragon Master asking, this is actually a great question to end the stream on. So thank you everyone uh, who's tuned in over the course of uh, hopefully this kind of interesting retrospective. I hope there was some insight to be gained in going through all the uh, the old maps here. But uh, yeah, this is a good question. Uh, Do you mind if we base the design styles of our own sci-fi world building maps on the DOV map? Not at all. Uh, in fact, that's exactly what I did um, when I was getting started, is I just, um, I was looking up every star map that existed and, and trying to borrow the best elements. I would say that just make sure that whatever you do, uh, bring your own spin to it, and uh, make sure you're not just, like, directly copying anybody, because that's no good. And probably not desirable anyways. Don't be a copy of a copy. Be be your own thing. So, but if you like the, uh, the design aesthetics of this, I have no problem with people uh, using that as a source of inspiration. That'd be cool. And hey, there's Alex Alexandrian Codex, our map master or master of the map saying thanks for the DOV cartography and nostalgia stream, Mark. Map nerd stream is Chef's Kiss. Hey, there it is. So that's all the uh the praise I need. So we will end things there. And I guess uh maybe just one last look at how things started versus uh how they ended up. So yeah, this was the map in um 2006 and this is the map a hundred years later I think the improvement is uh, is pretty good 
pretty pretty good. Oh, and actually, one last thing I can I can show off before we end things is um, I was joking about the uh, you know the additions that that Tim made to the map, but he actually has done quite a bit to to the map since uh, last stream, I believe. I think this is new, but um, he's added a lot more depth um, around the Argentine arm here. You can see just some background kind of. I don't know, vibes, smoke, some sort of mist kind of thing going on. It just looks looks nice. And I think, uh, yeah, just adding more details into the sides of these things. The map uh, will get big updates, like, you know, whole new sections, and the map will have smaller sections, or smaller updates. Another good example of this is uh, the Sea of Clouds. Oops, what am I doing? It's funny because Tim, you know, does these sections, and I'm like, oh, okay, so that's part is done. Like we're 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 all we're all done, and he just like keeps adding stuff. I'm like, oh shit, like that looks way better. So I'm really excited to see what uh, like all the changes that this is. Like God, that's so cool being able to like see through the the arch there. Like fucking wild. I love it. It's so good. Um, we are incredibly lucky that that Tim has. Uh, decided to work with us and I know I was giving him fake shit at the start for that for that uh, thing he added but uh, yeah it's it's uh, it's been so cool to see this thing come together I think that's all the big adjustments that occurred I mean there's some smaller ones around here oh shit I think I, I didn't notice this one is that new yeah that's really new yeah that is wild I, uh, I spend hours pouring over these maps and I keep finding new stuff. So, yep, this is the way the map looks now. Who knows what this map is going to be looking like in another year or another two years. Maybe we'll think this sucks and start over, but probably not. I think this is the winner. So thanks, everyone, again. And uh, yeah, I hopefully my, my health is going to get up there. I need to continue my playthrough of uh, Suzerain because that's been gnawing at me. But I want to do that on stream, so I'll wait again until my voice is better. Um, yeah, thanks everyone so much and uh, we'll catch you next time.